since we started posting videos about glyphosate production and King Kong Sun Classroom series videos, we received some messages from anti-cancer workers. Uh, they say that uh, the production and sales of glyphosate should be stopped because glyphosate will cause cancer and that King Kong Sun should stop posting these kind of videos about glyphosate. Here on behalf of King Kong Sun, I'd like to say to these anti-cancer workers, uh, first of all, thank you for your good job to human health. And at the same time, I hope you don't miss today's video because today we will talk about the latest EU determination of the safety of glyphosate and also talk about the importance of glyphosate to global agriculture. Uh, at King Kunsan, we work in the agriculture field. We are not medical scientists like you, but we are also concerned with the human well-being from the perspective of uh, agricultural production and food supplies. We know that in some of the world's poorest countries, how glyphosate helps farmers to protect their harvest because glyphosate can provide affordable prices and excellent performance in the field. So I hope today's video will help you get a new understanding on glyphosate. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Harry. I'm Maria. Welcome back to King Kun Classroom. Today we're going to talk about the latest big news about glyphosate. This news will affect whether glyphosate will continue to serve the global agriculture in the future. On May 30th, 2022, the European Chemicals Agency announced the conclusion of its review of the classification of glyphosate. Based on a wide-ranging review of scientific evidence, the ECHA Risk Assessment Committee concludes that classifying glyphosate as a carcinogen is not justified. Further, the committee found that the available scientific evidence did not meet the criteria to classify glyphosate for specific target organ toxicity or as a mutagenic or reprotoxic substance. Maria, how do you think about this news to the future of glyphosate? Yes, Harry, it's really a very important news. The renewal of glyphosate in Europe has attracted the attention of the farmers and the pesticide industry all over the world. Yeah. As the wing of the global pesticide industry, every action taken by Europe on any pesticide product will lead to the imitation of this product in other countries around the world. And for glyphosate, it's the world's most commonly used herbicide. The current approval of glyphosate in Europe will be expired on December 15, 2022. But since March 2015, the WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer identified glyphosate as probably carcinogenic to humans. This was based on limited evidence of cancer in humans and sufficient evidence of cancer in experimental animals. IRC also concluded that there are strong evidence to genotoxicity both for pure glyphosate and for glyphosate formulations. This had led to the fact that glyphosate cannot be renewed in Europe after it expired on December 15, 2022. At the same time, there are more than 30 countries already started to ban or restrict glyphosate due to the same reason. Now RSC already announced the final conclusion. It's not justified to identify glyphosate as a carcinogen. It means the key barrier to EU renewal of glyphosate has been removed. As a participant in the pesticide industry, I think this is good news for global agriculture. Because from the current herbicide research results, no any herbicide can replace the contribution of glyphosate in global agriculture field, yes. and no any other herbicide can match the cost effectiveness of glyphosate and meet the actual needs 
of global farmers. Yes, talking about the contribution of the glyphosate to the global agriculture, I got a study from National Center of Biotechnology Information of the United States in 2017. This study assessed the potential economic and environmental impacts that would arise if restrictions on glyphosate use resulted in the world no longer planting genetically modified herbicide-tolerant crops. First-round impacts are the loss of farm level and aggregate impacts associated with the widespread use of GMHT crops tolerant to glyphosate. There would be an annual loss of global farm income gains of 6.76 billion US dollars and lower level of global soybean, corn and canola production equal to 18.6 million tons, 3.1 million tons and 1.44 million tons respectively. There would be an annual environmental loss associated with a net increase in the use of herbicide of 8.2 million kilograms of herbicide active ingredient and a larger net negative environmental impact as measured by the environmental impact quotient indicator of 12.4%. Uh, also, there will be an additional carbon emissions arising from increased fuel usage and decreased soil carbon sequestration equal to the equivalent of adding 11.44 million cars to the roads. Global welfare impacts based on these farm level impacts points to uh, global production of soybeans and rapeseed falling by 3.7% and 0.7% respectively, partially offset by increases in other oil seeds. World prices of all grains, oil seeds and sugar are expected to rise, especially soybeans 5.4% and rapeseed 2%. The warfare impacts are mostly negative, with global warfare falling by 7,408 million US dollars per year. Land use changes will arise with an additional cropping area of 762,000 hectares, of which 53% derives from new land brought into cropping agriculture, including 167,000 hectares of deforestation. These land use changes are likely to induce the generation of an additional 234,000 million kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions. Yes, it's hard to imagine that the absence of one pesticide product could have such a big impact on the global agriculture and food industry. But if this product is glyphosate, that's what could happen. Yes, so uh, from the EU procedures of glyphosate uh, renewal, uh, what would happen next? The glyphosate renewal group welcomes the RSD opinion and remains committed to complying with all aspects of the ongoing EU regulatory process for the Reapproval of glyphosate in EU in a transparent manner based on robust science. The RSD opinion will fit into EFSS risk assessment. As a next step, EFSA, in collaboration with the member states, will complete its peer review and publish its conclusions. The adopted opinion will be published on ECHA's website and sent to the European Commission and EFSA by mid-August. EFSA will carry out its risk assessment of glyphosate, which is expected to be ready in July 2023. The EC will then announce EFSA's conclusion and the report by the four member states then put forward a renewal report and a draft regulation to member states on whether or not the approval of a global state can be renewed. King Sun will keep close attention to the follow-up development of a global state renewal. All right then. Okay, this is all for today. Hope this video can help you have a new understanding of global state. 
If you like it, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any more questions regarding to glyphosate, please leave us a message down here below in the comment zone and King Kun Sang will try to provide you with more information regarding to the pesticide industry. Thanks for watching. King Kun Sang, focus, focus on, on your, your harvest. harvest.